So our company is a biopharmaceutical uh, medium-sized company and uh, specifically focused on developing a DNA-based uh, therapeutic vaccine. And we cover both therapeutic area in the infectious disease and oncology. Our uh, platform is based on the knowledge and the understanding of uh, uh, the target, target, uh, you know, DNA or gene or anti or uncle uh, uncle gene. So based on that information, you can use available genetic information to construct the synthetic plasma DNA and use the synthetic plasma DNA as a therapeutic agent delivered to the patient with our state of art and uh, uh, you know, uh, patent uh, medical device, which is the in vivo uh, electroporosion to deliver, uh, to enhance the DNA transfection into the host, uh, in, in this case, uh, skeletal muscle cells, and the largest skeletal muscle cells as a host manufacturer to generate the targeted protein, which are captured by the APC cells, and educated the T cells, and the generated T cell antigen specific uh, response. So in this case, uh, uh, because of time interest, so in this case, I only present one of our ongoing study, which is uh, HPV positive head and neck cancer. This is a phase one open label study uh, at a single center at, uh, conducted by uh, at the University of Pennsylvania so far. It's a total sample size 25. So far, we already have uh, well already treated 20 patients. So it's interim analysis data. And for the therapeutic, for the therapeutic agent, as I mentioned, you know, this is uh, targeting for DNA. In this case, we have uh, the combination of plasma DNA encoding for HPV-16 and HPV-18, and both cover E6, E7 uh, uh, proteins, and with uh, uh, molecular adjuvant of interleukin-12 to stimulate T cells. And uh, another important thing I want to emphasize where our DNA vaccine vector is unique, we call SYNCON DNA uh, vector system. This system is, is uh, op optimized so to try to maximize the ability to break the self-tolerance. So before we reach this step, we already have our proof concept read out in the uh, cervical uh, high-grade cervical dyspepsia patient population use the same DNA vaccines. And uh, that, that's the phase two double-blind principal control study has been published recently in the Lancet. And uh, that's a proof, you know, this DNA-based vaccine is uh, safe and uh, well-tolerated and generate uh, uh, significant clinical benefit. And so based on that, based on Based on that information, uh, based on that's the you know the data, we hypothesize you know this the same DNA vaccine targeting for HPV 16, 18 plus interleukin 12 will be safe and well tolerated and will be immunogenic in the head and neck cancer patient which are associated with HPV 16, 18 infection. So the treatment is uh, uh, as I said, it's uh, it's a, it's a kind of a pretty. Oh, sorry. So the treatment is so is like this way. So so this is the um, the proof of concept study I just mentioned. I just so quickly brief to give you some idea what we talk about the proof of concept. So this is uh, the phase two double blind placebo control study in 165 patient multi center global study, and in high grade SYN2, SYN3 patient population treated with that vaccine three times, and then followed by you know, uh, you know, efficacy and safety up to um, 88 weeks, but the primary endpoint is disease regression at week of 36. And the primary endpoint, of course, is regression, as I mentioned, the secondary endpoint include uh, viral clearance. So uh, this study is complete and published. And uh, so in uh, treated, in vaccine treated patient population, you can see the, uh, the regression rate is 45 0.9% compared with placebo of 30%, which is statistically significant. 
And also we demonstrated the viral clearance, which correlated with the clinical benefit. And in the treated patient population, we are over 40% compared with 14%, which also statistically significant. And not only we meet, we meet our primary endpoint by the disease regression and the clearance of the virus, and here I also demonstrate additional piece of information for your interest, is we also generate the uh, CDA positive lymphocyte infiltration in the lesion. And so this picture just show you the viral clearance. As I mentioned, based on this approved concept study, we have opened uh, quite a number of phase one, phase two um, level of uh, 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 clinical study. And uh, so th this is the one I want to emphasize for this group of interest is uh, HPV uh, 16, 18 positive head and neck cancer patient. We have two cohorts. So, so the one cohort is uh, the patient that received the treatment prior to the surgery, like a new adjuvant, and followed by the adjuvant uh, continue after the procedure. Uh, surgical procedure all is completed after the chemo radiation therapy for four total four shots and uh, followed by uh, up to two years. The primary endpoint is safety tolerability. We also have a immunogenicity and the primary uh, preliminary uh, clinical benefit. So this is a patient uh, key uh, criteria and not nothing really uh, special. And we have, uh, as I mentioned, we have 20 patients uh, so far completed treatment. Uh, we consider this as interim analysis. And then 20 patients, uh, you can see the medium age is 57, the ma majority are, are male, and, uh, and, and the Caucasian patient, and the smoker is about 60%, and 65% uh, uh, in the town soil location, and the rest in the, in the town. And uh, so the primary safety, it's uh, it's uh, pretty uh, you know uh, within our you know previously established profile, and, and so we we don't have a grade three and above uh, study treatment related adverse events. We do have uh, uh, you know grade three uh, adverse events, which is not study treatment related, like anorexia, fatigue, and. Uh, acute kidney injury. We do have a two unrelated SAE, which due to the hospitalization, one is acute kidney injury, just as I mentioned, and also post-procedure hemorrhage. And all patients are, are recovered fully and continue on the study. So this is uh, the safety table. So nothing really, you know, uh, uh, you know, I want to point out heavily, but only here you want to see, you want to see most of them at high is a grade one and only have uh, you know few patients at grade two and no grade four and five. So this uh, table continue, and we demonstrated the uh, robust our uh, uh, immune uh, response in this patient. Uh, but we have ten patient sample analyzed from this 20. So this is a 10 patient sample. And we demonstrated that's the antigen specific, I'm sorry, uh, antigen specific, uh, 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 you know, uh, cellular response with, with uh, assessed by the interferon gamma elast spots. You see the peak response and that's the baseline. And also that's, uh, I said, uh, antigen specific. So that's different the rate. The previous one is read, uh, you know, P, uh, uh, you know, E7, um, E6, E7. So this is a rate, rate for the whole, whole, uh, you know, uh, both the combination of E6, E7, or the whole products. And also we show there's uh, the, you know, specific uh, uh, antibody production against, uh, you know, the antigen. So this is uh, uh, the, the for the e, uh, for the uh, 16 and 18. So the summary of the result, you know, these uh, products we call annals. 3112 is generally safe and well tolerant and can, can generate immunogenicity and in the both the cellular, in cellular level and, and in the uh, and the protein and the uh, uh, antibody. So we conclude, uh, you know, uh, 3112 DNA based immunotherapy can be safely you know, generate can be safely used in the head and neck patient population can generate, you know, Im uh, immunity. So I want to quote, you know, Dr. Cohen's uh, uh, statement, we should think about uh, beyond the PD-1, the PD-L1. So this is one option I want to introduce. 
Of course, I want to thank our patient and patient family and our collaborator of investigator at the University of Pennsylvania and, and our sponsor team. So thank you for your attention. So we'll do questions uh, at this time. Any questions? Or Dr. Banks, you want to share some questions? Or I, I do have one. Do you know with your uh, uh, CIN23, that study, have you seen persistent uh, control um, because, you know, again, it looks like you got that immune infiltrate. Uh, you know, CIN usually comes back mm -hmm. in most of the patients. Do, have you seen long-term control with uh, on those patients who responded? Right. So uh, I so now the study already published in the, the, the Lancet, but uh, we're just uh, at the stage of, uh, you know, database close, which will have the week 88 at the week 88, uh, you know, cut off. But, uh, you know, uh, from my previous, uh, you know, from my current information, which I learned, it's the, the treatment that remain the same, the, the, the outcome remain the same. And also we already demonstrated and published um, you know, a year ago, and our treatment after four shots of uh, that uh, vaccine, the antigen-specific immunity can last at least one and a half year or two years. So during this period of time, we're not expecting any, uh, you know, decreation or, 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 you know, taper off of the immunogenesis. So assuming um, the duration uh, of, of the treatment remain. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Dr.